Welcome to Hawk Talk. My name's Parker Robinson. It's been a few weeks since we caught up uh, with Coach O'Donnell of the golf team. Um, since then, you wrapped up your fall season with conference at Bully Pulpit. Um, talk a little bit about how that went. Uh, it's great to have the conference meet at Bully. I mean, it, it's a phenomenal course, as you know, and to bring up the teams from Iowa and Wisconsin, Nebraska, and for them to get experience of what we have in North Dakota is really good. I mean, the coaches really loved it, um, and it's a very challenging course, as, as you know. So it, that part of it was really good. Uh, I think the conference coaches thought it was a great venue. Uh, they put on a feed for us at the Rough Rider Hotel, a banquet. Um, so I thought they were treated very well and, you know, first rate, first rate course. Um, and as far as how we played, um, I thought we did really well as, you know, on the women's side, like we were talking about, the women have done a phenomenal job, um, brought down their score, over 100 strokes off the score last year uh, when we played that course. So that really tells you a little bit of how far that, that team has come. Um, you know, and obviously we, we want to climb in the conference as a team, you know, and it's going to be one of those baby step things because we definitely want to recruit people that we want to be on our team. You know, it's just not looking for good sticks. It's looking for good people. And, and, and it takes a little bit of time. You know, you're only going to get a couple spots every year um, to be able to build that. And so it, it's coming. I, I thought uh, we had guys that played real well. I think it was, it was something that um, we can build on going into the spring. Yeah, and pretty good weather. Uh, as far as late fall golf goes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, with the O'Donnell factor in case, you know, I watch the weather every day for those, you know, when you get the 10 day forecast on your phone and it's like, all right, it's gonna be good. Then the next one is, oh God, it's gonna be terrible. <laughs> so it was, it was one of those I thought we, we matched up really well and it turned out to be a pretty dang good uh, week. Yeah, and like you said, you can really start to see those teams coming together, especially on the women's side, um, as you, you begin to mold those teams and begin to kind of push into your tenure a little further. Um, what's kind of been your method in putting those teams together and how, how far have they come so far? I think a key to, for, for me anyway, in my type of recruiting is to make sure that the recruits meet with our team and they feel a good bond. Um, you know, and it's because anybody can recruit somebody good and you only get them for a couple hours a day when they're on campus and to really figure out their personality and if they met, it's kind of tough for me, you know, but a lot of times that first impressions that when they meet the team or they go out and have supper with uh, some of the teammates, they get to talk a little and they open up a little more to uh, somebody their age rather than myself. So I'm looking for people, you know, academically and, you know, they fit at the school right with their major and, and all that because we, you know, we definitely, even though they change their major twice before they graduate, we want to have that, you know, that bond right away. And then, you know, how coachable they are and if, if they would love golf. For me, it's, you know, we're not, we don't have guys that are shooting under par or anything like that. We're, we're looking for people that really love to golf and you can get better, you know, yourself, look at your scores have come down and it's just somebody that loves to compete and they love golf, then, then that, that's the fun part of coaching. If you're somebody that's really good at it and they don't like it, you're, you're constantly pulling on them and it, and it drains on the rest of the team. So trying to find people that really love to golf that are you know score well and then have that up that a lot of up on their uh, potential is is key for me and then fitting into no drama that sort of thing that's especially on the women's side uh, that's why I, I don't deal with uh, crying very well and i don't deal with drama so um i think our girls have done a great job of hey this person will be a great fit for us and it, it's kind of worked out so far yeah and like you said you're looking for people who love golf and they have to bear through some tough weather in the winter months um, talk about all that goes in in the winter months when you're, there's not a competition. Yeah, and, and, and that's probably our hardest. Thing. If we were in Arizona, it'd be easy to recruit, and you're going to be picking, you know, uh, uh, from a lot of kids that want to be there. Here, you want to find those kids that love to golf but are willing to have a split season and do things outside of golf that are going to help them in the golf. So, you know, we have the simulator in the winter. We go into the rec center we, and use the simulator during the winter months. And you know our exercise science program.
program has, uh, we use a Titleist program for winter workouts. So you, they have to have that ability or that, that desire to be able to take that off time to work on their program, even though they can't get on the course. Um, the, the simulator is great. You know, we had a couple of our kids were in the winter league last winter where you play a couple nights a week against other teams on a simulator. And it's not the same as obviously as being out on a court, but you're still swinging the club. You're still competing. You're still, you know, getting that pressure on, okay, I got to, I got to hit this shot. And those are key things that are going to carry over when we come out in the spring. Yeah, and a new facility on campus, the Sanford Sports Center in the Student Center, formerly the pool room. Um, not a simulator in there, but like you said, still the opportunity to get in there and swing. Yeah, I, I mean, definitely there's places on campus that, you know, the thing about uh, being a competitor is if, if you have the will to get better, we have the place for you to do that. Um, it's, you you got to have that will to start with. It is like, all right, you got to go down the hill. Well, you know, if they don't really put that effort into it, then it's not going to be there. Yeah, but we definitely have the facilities for them uh, to excel. Even though we're in the north, you know, and a lot of kids want to go down south, but um, I think I think we have great opportunity for them. They get able to be on a team. They be able to compete, you know. And we have a split season. It's basically the same season. It's just split split up. If you look at the total length of our season, if you combined it, it's like every other sport on campus. But we split it up. We'll do two months here and then take a few months off and do two months there. So really it's a long season if, if they're productive during the winter months. Yeah, I look at it as a long all-star break in the middle yeah. of the season. <laughs> um, and then looking forward into the spring, you get, we get to go down to Arizona and that's a great opportunity down there yeah, too. Yeah, we, we started that, I, I can't remember, the, the, one of the first years I took over, we um, have a, a family friend that has a place down there and they put us up for free. It, the cost, you know, we always say, well, we go to Arizona and they say, Jesus, you look at your budget. No, it's not their budget. That does. You know, we fundraise to go down there. Um, all the all the athletes pay for their own travel down there. But it, it, it's an, a great opportunity. We go over spring break. So to get down there and play a lot before our spring starts, um, you know, we'll play five or six courses when we're down there. And it, it's surprising. I, I make arrangements over the winter to go down there and the courses that we play are phenomenal. And if, if you would go down there regular and just pay the green fees, you're paying a lot more. We, we get pennies on the dollar. They give us a great break. I give them, hey, we're from North Dakota, and they're <laughs> all right. We'll, we'll get you down here and get you playing. So it, they treat us really well. Um, one of the courses on Lone Tree, we have a former uh, Dennis Lemke is a member there. He was a former basketball coach, and they treat us well. We walk 9 in the morning. We get their private range for a couple hours. Then we play another 18 in the afternoon. Um, and they just treat us like a first, uh, first rate team. And it, it's really, really nice for our team to have that great bonding. We spend that week together doing a lot of different activities, but a lot of golf. And, um, you know, it, it's good to rust, knock the rust off before the spring. We come back and we get right into our spring schedule. And definitely in this winter, it won't only be uh, working on the swings, working on the game. It'll also be working on that budget we talked about a few weeks ago. Um, how's that been progressing? Uh, good, you know, and I, I think our, our team members are the ones that have really done a good job. They've gone out and they've talked to individuals, a lot of family and friends, mostly right at this point. And we have about over half of it raised. We just had a, a golf scramble we threw together for homecoming, which is tough because it was, you know, 11 o'clock on a Friday. So there, there's a lot of people that told me, hey, I would have been able to play, you know, if it was on a weekend just because of work. So we're trying to do another one in the spring. Um, but I think really the selling point with the three year, give a certain amount each year um, pledge, that really, once we get that raised, and we want to do that by this winter. So then, you know, our recruiting can be, hey, we have this set, we're, we're good to go. And, um, and, and that's been come along real well, and we're, we're, all, we're getting there halfway, and um, we really need to work over it over the Christmas. Yeah, and definitely a good time, um, you know, as tax season rolls around in the spring, make sure it's a tax yeah. de deductible uh, donation as well. Yeah, and that's the thing with the, the pledge amount. You know, we don't really need it. We don't want them. Right now, we're looking, all right, by March, you're looking at, you make that first installment, second, next year by March, and that, then you'd have that receipt for your, 
your tax write off. And that's where a lot of the, you know, we did $1,000 for three years. A lot of those uh, parents, grandparents, that sort of thing, you know, some, our businesses in town that are, that were golfers, they were, they come up and approach and say, hey, we really want to help. And it just helps them, you know, it takes that money right off the top for the tax deduction. So it really doesn't cost them near as much as what they're giving, but it definitely is a benefit for us and to help us keep going. Yeah, absolutely. And then transitioning, golfing uh, was not your first passion. You were a wrestler at heart. Um, in this past weekend with homecoming, you had a special team going in to the Hall of Fame. That's the 2000 wrestling team. Uh, and Brett Needens as well as an individual. Talk a little bit about that team and, and about Brett. Yeah, that, that was definitely a, a, a great weekend. It was, it, was, it was a tough weekend. We did the scramble on, on Friday. We had the fellows, because I'm the chair of our department, we had Randy Berwick go in as our PE fellow, which he was a national champ for wrestling, and he was one of my uh, student coaches when I was wrestling. So that was a real special for me to be able to introduce him in, uh, as our fellow for our department. And then we had the All-American uh, banquet, and you know, and Brett had a great career here. You know, when I talked to, him in there, he started out his freshman year, struggled. Uh, he was 18 and 19 as his record as a freshman, and then from his sophomore to his senior year, is like 104 and 12. So he really, he was one of those that we always talk about when we talk about golf, somebody that loves the sport and wants to get better and loves to compete, and that was Brett. He was definitely a student of the game. He was always analyzing where he was at, and we, he spent a lot of hours in my office asking questions and trying to figure things out, and he definitely was able to do that. Um, so it was great to see him go in, and, you know, and I think the, the committee does a great job of, you know, all right, we're looking at the, the team that did really well, who was one of the standouts, and get them inducted at the same time. And, and, but the team that was inducted did not realize at the time, uh, but 17 years later, how diverse that, that group was that we brought in. And um, it was actually the one that were seniors in that group. That was my first recruiting class. So Brett was in there and Dusty and Matt Meyer. So there was a bunch of those guys we had a record, eight All-Americans. That was the most that we've had at any time, even today. That's the most we've ever had uh, place at one, in one tournament. And there was a couple guys I thought should have placed in that tournament. Um, but that, that was a great, uh, great team. There was a lot of, it, it definitely, I think it was one that really molded uh, me as, a, you know, we talked about coaching philosophy and I teach a couple coaching classes. We talk about philosophy and how your philosophy will change. That team probably initiated a lot of change in my thoughts on coaching. Um, they tested me a lot on, you know, attitude, on, you know, what they were doing, and, and it really molded how I approached things. And what, I heard stories this weekend I didn't know about during, during the time. They, they called me uh, Thad the dad. So cause evidently I had enough hammer on them that they felt like I was a dad. So, but there was a lot of carryover, and it, it was great. When you have 21 guys come back, um, I think that shows how close a group that was and they really did something special for, for us at the time, the highest placing. And at that time, um, we were in a real tough neighborhood in University of Mary and, and Northern Montana was the returning national champs and we beat them in a tournament and they ended up beating us at the national tournament, but it was, it was something that, you know, I'm very proud that, that that team went in. Yeah, absolutely. You beat both of those teams that year. Also, that was the team that kind of developed the program as a whole built the wrestling room and just kind of meant a lot in the future. Yeah, it, it was kind of unique. It was, it was one when I first started out, you know, trying trying to get this thing going. Kind of got, where we're at in golf right now, it feels like trying to get it going. What can we do to make this better? And you know, our room was really cramped. We we're getting guys that banged up just because we we're just falling all over ourselves. The student center was gutted. There was some uh, screw up in the in the legislature that. Uh, they couldn't continue uh, working on it, so it was basically sitting empty, uh, the main floor was, and we hauled our mats down there, threw up some plywood, spray painted Blue Hawks and no regrets on it, and away we went. And they really excelled, and that enabled us to fix our room, expand it out a little bit, um, and do some of that construction, and, and then they moved in, and that was, that was the start of it. Um, and I, I think there's a lot of carryover, the, a lot of those guys on that team, um, Jesse uh, uh, Beckler, James Lurkey, Wade Blankenberg. There are a lot of guys, uh, Anthony Barlett, that are out coaching uh, high school kids. 
we had two kids from Jesse. You know, we, we've had a lot of, a lot of John Solano came from where Jesse Beckler was, Mikey did. And so they've returned that to Dickinson State, which once you get that established, it, you know, they're your recruiters for you. They know what it takes to go through. And they know your standards and what you want in a kid. So they really help out um, bringing the quality and keep, keep that level high as it can. Yeah, and looking back at that, that Hall of Fame class as a whole, that 15 to 20 years ago, Dickinson State Athletics, you know, what was it like to be a part of all of that? Yeah, it was it was a exciting time, and I was young at, at that time, or younger, I should say, that, <laughs> that amount of time. But, you know, I was coaching football at the time um, and, and wrestling, so it was, I had a great mentor, and we talked about the team, how I voted, but my dex, next door neighbor in the hallway was Hank Bijou, and um, I would have some up and downs because the younger you are, the more emotional you are with, with coaching and to have somebody there to help you know, level out the hills and bring up the valleys a little bit um, definitely helped me. Um, and coaching's coaching, so it wouldn't matter if you're coaching underwater basket weaving, it's all the same. You get, if you're invested in it and you have a passion for it, um, it, it carries a lot of value and, and Hank helped me a lot with that, but we had some awesome teams back then. Um, and I'll never forget in football when and we were really we had really good teams. It was kind of like uh, homecoming where he had a blowout and we would have those. And then by second half, they're throwing in everybody. They make sure everybody had a lot of playing time. And I ever I told guys, well, if you want in the game, you go stand by Hank. He'll throw you in. If you're a defensive guy, he'll throw you in on <laughs> offense. And I mean, we actually scored a touchdown. I can't remember which. Uh, uh, which game it was, but we had one of our defensive uh, linemen got in as a tight end on offense, caught a touchdown pass and scored. And I'm, Coach Hoffman was on the headsets, and I'm down. <laughs> How the heck did he get in there? You know what? And I said, well, Hank threw him in there. Now he thinks he's an offenser. Now he thinks he can be on the tight end. So, you know, but that was the kind of teams that we had. I mean, they're were, they were very competitive. Um, you know, and it was a great group, great group of guys to be around, and a lot of those coaches are around. Um, but I noticed when we did the introductions the other night, uh, we got a lot of young coaches now, and, and that's going to be that passion, that drive is, is going to be there. Um, and I think you're going to see that uh, come up with the level of our, our competition, too. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for coming on, Coach. You bet. Uh, thanks for telling some stories. Hopefully you're preparing your speech for the 2017-2018 golf team um, in you know, 15, 20 years, whatever it may be. You bet. Uh, best of luck. We'll be back talking about another sport that Coach O'Donnell used to coach cross country. Welcome back to Hawk Talk for our Blue Feather Focus. The Blue Feather Athletic Association uh, is the funding body for all of athletics through the DSU Heritage Foundation, um, bringing student athletes in from all over the world. Um, one from next door in Montana here, um, joined by Tristan Guillot. Uh, talk about your journey coming to Dickinson State University and how you ended up here. Well, I used to run cross country and track in Twin Bridges, Montana, just a small town of 300 people. And I wasn't even, didn't even know where Dickinson was. And I was gonna join the Navy, but I got a phone call from Coach Ben Scheuer at the time. And I don't know what it was, but something just clicked. And I didn't even see campus. I saw a few pictures of what Dickinson looked like. I took a leap of faith and I just signed the papers and I've been here ever since. Yeah, here you are. Um, and you came here, you know, we played basketball against each other. Yeah. Hawk and Fredrickson, he's on the track team as well. What's it like to see some of those familiar faces that you competed against and now that you're, uh, you're a part of the same team as? It was, well, with Hawken, I mean, our high schools were rivals, uh, Twin Bridges and Ennis, and I mean, now we're living together, now we're best friends, we're teammates, we're brothers. Um, it's really nice, you just get this bond with each other, and even though we were rivals, but now we're like brothers, like I said, but you know, I kinda like it, see familiar faces around campus, especially bunch of them that are all over Montana from the small towns 
it just feels nice that you know people. Yeah, definitely. Um, we talked to Coach Whitcop a couple of weeks ago, and he kind of preached on you know the race strategy and trying mm -hmm. to build that up. What what do you look for? What are you planning on when you step up to the line? Um, most races, you just have to plan that your first mile is going to go out a little faster than you want. So I don't ever just put a time in my head for that first mile. I'll just go and feel the race. But that second mile is, for me, it's key. That second mile, if you negative split, like if you go out your first mile, run a 510, and then your second mile, you go out and run a five flat, your third mile is probably not going to look so hot. But if you go out there, run a 510, run five seconds slower, or just the same time, then you can work with that going on to your late miles, your third, fourth, and fifth. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, even though it's, for the most part, an individual sport, you're out there running by yourself, how much teamwork goes into uh, the training aspect of things? Oh, a lot of teamwork. I mean, a lot of people do look at it as an individual sport. I mean, and it is, but it's, for us, it's a huge team thing. Um, most of us, we don't, care what place we're going to get. We want to score as a team. Our motto last year was win as one, and we did. And this year, it's kind of the same thing. I mean, for training, we're out there, we're pushing each other, we're competing against each other, but we all have the same goal, and that's to win conference and get back to nationals. Yeah, definitely. And that's a place you've been the last two years, your first two years competing. Talk about those experiences. Oh, there's nothing like nationals. I mean, you're stepping up to the line against two to three hundred people and they all have the same goal and their goal is to beat you and your goal is to beat them. It's all the same mindset and just the atmosphere is crazy because you're going against all these nationally competitive runners and it's just a great experience all around. Yeah definitely and what have you taken from those experiences um, and kind of passed down as a leader uh, to those younger runners? Um, with those it's basically you just can't worry about what everyone else is doing. You have to run your own race. You have to stay inside your own head. And with running, if you let one little thing get inside your mind, that can ruin your whole race. You gotta be mentally tough and you always have to be on yourself. And you always have to be thinking, oh, I'm gonna get the next guy, I'm gonna get the next guy. All right, I'm running good here, I gotta hold my pace. So it's basically just staying mentally tough. And honestly, my biggest thing is before I go into a race, I have to visualize my race. I have to visualize how I'm gonna be mentally prepared. I have to visualize how I'm gonna run. I have to visualize if there's someone ahead of me, how I'm going to pass them, or if I'm going to stick on their shoulder for until I see them die, and then pass them. So, yeah, it's a lot of visualization, and then it's a lot of just being mentally tough throughout the whole race. Yeah, definitely, and you've got to be mentally tough. Um, in your shoes, you know, it's a nonstop season, basically, the entire calendar year, um, you know, going from cross to indoor to outdoor. How do you keep your body just rejuvenated for all of that? Well, you... When you have recovery days, you really have to recover. Um, when coach gives you a day off, you have to take that seriously. You have to be hydrated. You have to sleep well. You have to eat the right things. And you have to go do things on your own, like stretch. You have to roll out, ice when you can ice. It's basically, it is an all-around sport for us cross-country kids, but uh, you have to take your own initiative. And when it's your recovery days, you have to recover on your own. So. Yeah, definitely, and you know those other two indoor and outdoor track has been pretty successful as well for the Blue Hawks. Um, what's it been like to you know just win conference championships all year? Um, it's a really great experience, but I don't know. Every every time we go into a conference meet, I feel like both men and women don't go in it thinking, "Oh, we got this." We have you have to go in there thinking anything can happen. It's a conference meet, and we just go there to compete and. We do a pretty good job at it. Yeah, definitely. And then looking forward at the rest of the cross country season, you got another two meets on the regular season schedule. Um, on the 22nd, you guys head down to Mount Marty. Uh, you said that's a new track down there, but last year at that meet, you finished 15th. Um, what, what's your plan in going into that this weekend? Um, my personal plan is I'm going to go out and try to stay within the top 40 people just at the beginning, first two, two and a half miles. I'm just going to start picking my way. I've had a good, I mean, the whole team, we've had a good uh, two weeks of training. We're really starting to come together, putting the pieces together, and I'm really excited to see what we do. Mount Marty is a great meet. We have a lot of great competition that we don't see all year, and it's just a really good meet to actually come out and show what you got against other teams that are in NAIA. 
Yeah, definitely. And then November 4th, you guys head back to Jamestown for that North Star <laughs> Athletic Association conference meet. Um, talk a little bit about that. You guys were there a couple weeks ago. What's the course like there? Of course, it's a, it's a really nice course. It's, it can be fast if you run it fast. Um, it's flat. It's not a boring course just for the fact that you have trees, you have scenery, and but it's a nice course. I mean, I really enjoy it, and I feel like my teammates really enjoy it as well. The meet itself, it's going to... It's going to come down to who wants it and who's put in more work and who's got more heart. I mean, that was the same as last year. It was us against Waldorf, and we beat them by four points. This year, I mean, we have Valley City, who's looking to come and take it from us. But I know we've been working hard, and we're excited to see what we got and take it to them. So. Yeah, definitely. Like you said, Valley City's kind of the competition this year. Um, they just beat you by four points when you were in Jamestown a couple weeks ago. Talk a little bit about the point system and how every runner, you know, has to step up to and uh, compete. So for college, you have five runners that have to cross the line to score. And let's say I get second place, I score two points. And the lowest score wins. You add up all the five runners' scores at the end. Whoever has the lowest score wins. And it placing matters. Every runner counts. Um, we need... I mean, we have eight guys this year, and we need everyone to cross the line because if it comes down to a tie, it's going to go down to that sixth place guy. And yeah, we lost to Valley by four points that last James Sam meet, but it's an early meet. I'm really not too worried about it. We lost to Waldorf pretty big early in the season last year, and they counted us off, and we came back and rallied. But it's going to be. It's going to be a good one. I'm really excited. They've recruited hard. They have a lot of runners. They're putting like 15 guys to the line, whereas we're putting eight. So it'll be good to see where we go with the season and how everyone's improved. And I feel like we're, we've improved, so don't, kind of, don't count us out. Yeah, definitely. And then kind of tr uh, transitioning on the academic side of things, you know, what's your major and what are you planning to go into after you graduate next year? My major is composite social science with a criminal justice track. And um, honestly, I want to be a juvenile probation officer. And yeah, I just kind of on the justice side of things, maybe even a parole officer or a juvenile counselor. And hopefully I can go home and do my internship under a local juvenile probation officer named Sam Socket. That would be pretty cool, I feel like. But, yeah. All right. Well, best of luck to you for the rest of the season, Tristan. Thank you. Um, like you said, they're on the road. Football's on the road for the next couple of weeks. Volleyball will be back home this weekend, though. Um, other than that, make sure you check out dsubluehawks.com for all your Blue Hawk uh, information. Until next week, Hawks are up.